This is the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending May 19, 2012. Facing the media this week are Secretaries Hilton Sandy and Tracy Davidson Celestin. Mrs. Celestin begins with a look at the upcoming Tobago Heritage Festival. This year's festival, we celebrate the 25th anniversary and we also of the Heritage Festival and we also celebrate the 50th anniversary of independence. And so this year's team, yours, mine and ours, to preserve and to protect. Of course, we know that the duration of the festival runs from mid-July to very early August. But because we are celebrating the anniversary of independence and also 25th anniversary of heritage, we will have a month-long activities. We will have a month-long activity, a month long of activities commencing from 1st July right down to the 1st of August. And that month will be known as Unity Month. And we will start off those activities, those village presentations, with the Bell Garden Ballet Festival. And so, of course, you know that one of the aims of the division is to try to have a year-round approach to heritage. And so we see this as, you know, one of the new approaches, not only to the heritage, but we are having only a month-long activities in the month of July, early July to the first week, um, to the first Monday, sorry, or the first of August um, 2012. I just want to say that most of the plans are on the way. Um, village presentations would have been submitted and they are in the process of assessing um, those village presentations and the Festival Commission, the Heritage Festival Commission, at this time is engaged in serious planning and implementation of some of the programs and the activities to ensure that Heritage Festival remains alive and well on this island and that the celebration of our heritage and our traditions are well known and passed down from generation to generation. The Secretary then looked at the night market which was launched in late March at the Pembroke Heritage Park. We will be going back to Pembroke in the month of May, as a matter of fact, just before the holiday on the 29th of May, which is the second initiative, or the second night market rather, and it will be done in collaboration with the Pembroke Heritage Board. Of course, you know this is a culmination, this program is a culmination of our vocational skills training program that are in the communities, that are in the um, community centers in particular. And we have quite a number of skills development um, classes and programs, handicraft development, in um, fashion, in um, textiles, so to speak, upholstery designs, in food preservation and preparation. And so at the end of these particular programs or sessions, we will have those night market initiatives in different parts of Tobago, starting off with Pembroke, where we provide those participants and other entrepreneurs with the opportunity to sell the produce, to sell the products that would have emerged from the vocational skills training program, as well as other efforts that have been made in the um, community. And so we're providing that opportunity for the participants and members or of, of, of communities to sell their offerings to the public. Of course, um, the success of this will be based on the participation from the public. And I'm really, you know, putting out a call to Tobigonians to come and give support to these budding entrepreneurs so that they can, too, um, be encouraged to continue to participate in the class and also to continue to produce um, and to help with the development of this local or infant industry, so to speak. Details were then given of the Community Development's Computer Literacy Walking Program. We know that computer literacy is one of the objectives that we are working towards as a vision of the Tobago House of Assembly and also of the Division of Community Development and Culture. And what we will be trying to do 
is to replicate the model that is presently in existence at the Bell Garden um, Community Center. That is an initiative by the Division of Community Development and Culture, as well as an initiative by the Tobago Information Technology Limited um, Center, so to speak. And in that center, at the Bell Garden Center, so far we have had over 1,400 participants accessing computer literacy programs or accessing computer um, services at that facility. So far it is working very well and we want to take it to other venues because as I said the objective is to ensure that we have computer literate persons um, throughout Tobago and also to ensure we have programs to maximize the use of our community facilities. The training is twofold. We have the training at the basic level where we provide basic computer um, literacy and those classes are held twice a week in things like Microsoft um, Word, PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel and Access, the basic Microsoft package. And then we have the more advanced um, stage and then we also have the walk-in program that provides um, computer and internet access to members of the community or members of the district, so to speak. Now, in terms of the um, possible sites, we have J John Dial, we have Lansamy, Glamorgan, Argyle, Blackrock, Buko, Mount Pleasant, and Palatovay. And those programs will be rolled out on a phased basis, starting with three, another, starting with three, in the second week in June, um, that will be Glamorgan, Mount Pleasant, and um, Black Rock. And then we have the others coming at the end of June. And, and, uh, and of course, the public will be notified accordingly. We also have those porter cabins that we want to turn into youth-friendly spaces. Um, when I say youth-friendly spaces, a place where the young people can um, socialize and also access um, computer, the internet and you know other literacy classes and presently we are engaged in the exercise of refurbishing um, those bins and I will speak just a little bit more on those porter cabins. The secretary also gave details on a community center management okay. approach program. The Division of Community Development and Culture has been charged with the responsibility not only of constructing community facilities, but we also have to ensure that we have programs in those community facilities in order to maximize the investment and also to ensure that we can have development for the residents of our community and in particular um, Tobagonians. And we have been plagued with the challenge of maximizing those facilities. We basically have about 35 um, community centers in Tobago. We have more that are in construction and we have just about two more that are likely to start in the month of June. But we have the challenge of maximization of those facilities. And so we have come up with a community center management approach that speaks basically to uh, having community center coordinators that will help us to utilize the spaces to manage, to coordinate different programs and activities within those multipurpose facilities. And we have renamed them to multipurpose facilities in keeping with the vision and in keeping with the um, different program of activities. And each facility, of course, will be constructed with that in mind. And the intention here is to ensure we have community centers opened from morning to night with different activities taking place in those facilities and of course catering to different um, target audiences. So we will have programs for the youth, we will have programs for those who are not so young, we will have programs for the, 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 the sporting facility, we will have programs for the cultural groups, etc. And so far we have identified just about, we have identified um, about 10 to 12 um, community facilities 
for the first phase of the community center management approach. Those being John Dial, being Palatavir, we have Glamorgan, we have Golden Lane, just to name a few. And as I said, the intention here is to have those facilities open from morning to night and to have programs in those facilities that helps with the empowerment, that helps with the development of our charges and speak to, and programs that will speak to different sectors of the population, um, so to speak, so that we can have some more predictability, we can have some more consistency where um, programs are concerned in these multi-purpose facilities, so to speak. This led the secretary into the community centre repairs program. We know that aesthetics is very important and while we speak about maximizing the investment made by the Tobago House of Assembly and while we speak of ensuring that we have programs in those centres from morning to night, we also have to ensure that the facilities, especially those that were built um, some time now, are in good um, shape or in excellent working condition. And so the division has highlighted over 15 centers to be upgraded. Most of the things are in place. We have had our discussions with MTS. They are our project managers. And we have several facilities to, re re to be refurbished. These include WIM, Mariah, Mason Hall, Le Coteau, Cudler Hall, Signal Hill, Argyle, Goodwood, Golden Lane, Glamorgan, Delaford, Mason Hall, Canby, Fairfield Complex, to name a few. And the nature of the, uh, the, nature of the upgrades um, differ. In some areas, we have some leaks. We have to deal with that. In some areas, we need um, to be, to be, it needs to be painted. We also have to deal with that. And in some areas, um, especially those that were identified for computer literacy in the first phases, as, um, for instance, Dollar Ford, we have to make sure that we have the facilities, that space up and running for the, um, for the computer literacy program to be implemented. So now that we have had the money is in place, we have had the discussions with um, MTS and we have had our necessary approvals, we expect that work will start in about the second, the second week in June for the refurbishment um, exercise of these 15 facilities. I also want to bring the Bell Garden community up to date and also Lambo and to let them know that plans are well in place for their um, multi-purpose facility and we expect to see um, work starting there in third week of June. The progress of Tobago's infrastructure was brought to the table by Secretary Hilton Sandy. As you know, you know the Ford by the centre over the years had flooding problems taking place at the centre and the assembly through the infrastructure division take a, took a decision to review the drainage program in that area and came up with plans to construct a very large underground drain at the center. The work to date is about 98% completed and I'm happy to see the division through the Thomas program would have worked well to reach this state or that stage because as you know, with the rains, see, with the rainy season, we could have had problems again at the center. So with the completion of that drain, is that there will be no more flooding in the Delaford center compound. Also, let me just report to the people of Tobago on the Castara Hills. As you know, we will have identified the problem of, of the overflowing of the water on the hillsides and bringing down huge landslides in Castara on the main road. The problem here is that we will have tried to get in to the area by use of an helicopter, but that did not work for us. We have tried using workers from the division to walk the terrain to find the slippage. 
they found the slippage, but getting beyond that was a problem. So what I want to say is that we would have thought we'd have had this slippage corrected before the rainy season. Nevertheless, next week they are going to be using another route to get into the forest to find the main water course because the slippage is from where the water starts coming down. And once they get in there and they could find the roadway to get the equipment up inside, we'll go up and make the correction. So I want the residents of Castara to bear with us. We are working on the problem. We have not given up. We are working on the problem. Soon, we hope to bring closure to that problem at the Castara Hills. Also, at the running mead slippage, we would have found the problem. We had tests taking place over the past year, and the road is holding. We've been trying to, to get sheet piles, steel sheet piles to Tobago, but there was a problem because the quantum you have to order from abroad, the Tobago House Assembly had no use for those, for that, for that amount of piles. We were trying to, to get piles from Miami, used piles, and that also failed. But as recent, we would have found piles in Trinidad that came in, a company brought into Trinidad to do a jetty. And they no longer want to construct that, that jetty. So we're going to get some piles from the company NEC. They promised to sell us some piles. And we're hoping to get those piles next week. Once we get getting the piles next week, we're going to commence the drive of the piles in that area. There's a 40-foot length piles we will drive along the roadside to hold the bank, and we hope to widen the road in so doing to get back the, that width of the road at the Runnymede Junction where we had the slippage taking place. So again, I want the motorist driving public to bear with us is that the problem has been found, the road is holding, it's just a matter of putting in the piles on the side of the road to hold the embankment and to widen the road. Mr. Sandy then gave an update on the ongoing road paving exercise throughout Tobago. To date, we have, we have completed 98 streets throughout Tobago. The paving program so far, we would have paved 98 streets. Work is ongoing in the Speyside district. And then we're going to commence work in the Bloody Bay Road, going to Castara and these areas. So that work will commence there soon. Hopefully, we are hoping to start the work there next week. All being equal, we're hoping to start the paving in that area next week. Goodwood, we also we're going to do some paving in Goodwood. Hoping to start in the next two weeks. And then we go back to the areas that we would have done. So any unpaved road that was not taken up in the first instance, we will take up those roads and complete the entire road network in Tobago. I'm not saying that at the end of the exercise that every road will be paved, but most of the roads will be paved in Tobago. The roads that are heavily used will be paved so we'll have no problem with the road in the Queen Tobago. What you're going to have going on also is the access roads, agricultural access roads ongoing. That is going good under the Division of Agriculture. That is going full pace. So you'll find that the farmers also would be happy with the road network under agriculture. In his capacity as Deputy Chief Secretary, Mr. Sandy addressed the Roxborough folk performance failure to travel to England. What is not so right is that they have tried to implicate the assembly. They've tried to give the public the impression that the failure of the group not being able to make the trip was because the assembly didn't come to the rescue of the group, because that is in the, in the papers. 
where they approached the assembly for funding, and that fund was not given. Now, I want to say here that the assembly was not approached for funding. The assembly was never involved in the trip going to the UK organized by Mr. Len Toppin as the chairperson and the musical director, the Minister for Tobago Development, Ms. Vanilla Allen Toppin. The Roxborough Folk Performance is a good group. They will have performed in Tobago. It's a talented group. It's a group I always admire. It's from my, my, my constituency. And I wish them the best. I hope they will continue. I hope this mishap would not create any problems with the group carrying on its performance. Because I was a little taken aback when somewhere in the report it was said by Ms. Toppin that she's not really in the group. She's the musical director. But I know that you know, she was very close to the group and people would have felt that she was one of the key players in the group. But having said that, she would have said that and her husband is the, is the chairperson of the group and he's in charge. And I hope that this debt will be settled by them so that the, the name of the group will be able to get out of that stigma of owing monies abroad. You know, I hope that will take care. But I want to make it clear that the assembly is not involved. The Tobago House of Assembly is not involved in the group's travel to the UK. And I want it to Tobago probably to know that the Tobago House of Assembly is not to be blamed. And this also triggers another point where persons are again trying to embarrass the Tobago House of Assembly. As you know that there was this cycling, classic, the Tobago cycling classic that took place in Tobago. And it was decided that the International Sporting Network will air, air the, or show the, 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 the sporting activity for that exercise on ESPN. It was shown, and Tobago was pushed well on that program, where they show it on the TV, ESPN, as you know, that's a powerful network. But the problem arose when came to pay the bill. The Minister of Sport had given the assurance to Mr. Jeffrey Charles, who is the president of the Tobago Cycling Classic, to pay the bill for that broadcast. And what has happened is that a letter was sent to Mr. Jeffrey informing him that the ministry no longer take up that bill and he must come to the Tobago House of Assembly. Now, this is very embarrassing because we are playing here with a very important network, which is bad even for the Tobago cycling classic people because the reputation is at stake. And as a government and as a minister, making a commitment to a sporting organization, when we, we, we are pushing sport in Tobago, where we want to go to the Olympics, where we want to show off our skills throughout the world. And it's very bad for Tobago, Tobago also assembly, where we have our international stars in looking to make headlines in the Olympics to come. And here it is, that when you see it from Tobago, and here that Tobago in this classical sport, not paying is built to a powerful network, it's bad for Tobago. And this is just trying to embarrass the Tobago House of Assembly. Because we have all the letters here where the commitment was made. As a matter of fact, a commitment was made for first $150,000 where Minister Baker was involved, where he came and he spoke at the classic opening and said that the minister agreed to sponsor certain parts of the classic. 
of $150,000. And after that, the same minister again, we never going to pay in that money. The Tobago Assembly had agreed to support the, the classic with certain prize money, which the Tobago Assembly has honored and will always honor its commitment to sporting bodies. Once we pledge to support sports at all levels, the money is paid. This is very embarrassing, and I want the people of Trinidad and Tobago to know that the Tobago House of Assembly will have to review its position on this bill and to see what could happen, because it's a, it's a bill that we don't know who's going to pay it. But we have to look at it seriously, because it is interfering with our tourism. Everything. Because once you say Tobago is owing on it, this money is bad for Tobago. I'm hoping that the minister may change his mind and agreed to pay this bill that he, he had agreed to pay and honor his commitment. Failing to, well, our chief secretary will have to look at it and see what could be done. His letter is here where Mr. Jeffrey Charles is saying that the the strange behavior taken by the honorable minister to renege on the Minister of Sport commitment in 2010 is no one attempting to do the same for 2011. So he had promised again to give money for 2011 and he's reneging also. So I don't understand why it is that the minister is committing himself to sporting organizations, especially when it comes to Tobago. It's a great embarrassment to us, and I'm hoping that um, he will look at this thing seriously and, and stick to his commitment, because this is putting this, the Tobago Assembly in a very strange light, which we don't like happening to Tobago. So in one hand is Minister for Tobago's Development Husband, I recall that it, we would have assisted the New Dimensions, which was once headed by, or had the involvement of Ms. Toppin, and the group went to the USA, and that group was stranded in the USA. They couldn't come back to Tobago. And Mr. Harvey Boris, who was an attaché to Miami, of the government, embassy in Miami, called me and said that this group in Miami or somewhere in the States is, has problems and they want monies or assistance to get back home. He called me. I then called Secretary Wilson at the time who is the Secretary of Tourism and explained the situation to him and asked him to make contact with Mr. Harvey Boris, which he did. And the Tobago Tourism Division under the THA came to the rescue of that group. And that was in 2006, when Ms. Toppin was not in the, as a minister. And that is the only time I know that a request was made. And the request was strange because it came from abroad. So just to avoid the group being embarrassed out there, there are all people from Tobago our ambassadors have went out on a cultural exp expedition. And because they had problems, the Tobago House of Assembly came to their rescue. And that is why, you, as you see, the assembly of this era is a caring assembly, care about its people. We take care of our people. We wouldn't like them to go out there and, you know. But it's very embarrassing to know that the group in Roxborough which is my constituency, that the name has to be called in foreign areas, foreign places, for owing money um, to, 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 to Miss um, Alling, or what's her name, was out there. The media then asked questions. The Heritage Festival, you said, will be one month now. Are you encouraging more villages to come on board to, to fill in the gaps, or what will you be doing in the space of the month? No, because it was two weeks before, mm -hmm. so it will fill up the, the month. 
Well, there are different villages that have been um, selected um, because you know you can't accommodate all of the villages in the two-week period. And we had started an approach with Heritage as a year-round um, festival um, experience where you had villages like Bell Garden, we were supposed to go to Mount St. George, etc. They will now use that other two-week gap to fill the month-long um, slot. So we start, we have pushed back the Bell Garden Heritage, the Bell Garden Belly Fest from May, and it will now be in July, just for this year alone, to deal with the 25th anniversary and also the 50th anniversary of independence. Thanks for watching the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending May 19, 2012. For the Department of Information, I am Sophie Guillaume.